Hello and welcome back to the One Take Show podcast. In this episode, we are in conversation with Arkin Tyagi. Arkin is an animation student at Ravenspawn University in London, and he is an amazing, amazing artist. Comic book characters in various shapes and forms, which can be accessed in the links which are enlisted down in the description. Please show your love. He is a brilliant artist, and lately he has been creating NFTs, that is non fungible tokens. So in this episode, naturally, we talk about. what are nfts why is he creating nfts how can nft influence our current cultural phenomenon our perception about blockchain cryptocurrency and everything this is a wonderful episode arkin is a brilliant conversationalist and i genuinely enjoyed talking to him and i'm sure you are going to love this episode as well so if you do please make sure you like share and subscribe to this channel if you have any suggestions feedbacks write them down in the comment section i would love to read them And with that, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's start the podcast. You want something? Go get it. Period. Okay, three, two, one. We are recording. Hello, Arkin. Welcome to the One Take Show. To all my viewers of the One Take Show, the background that you're seeing right now is one of the many creations of Arkin Tyagi. He is a wonderful, wonderful artist. And currently, he has come up with something so exciting that I couldn't wait but have this conversation. Thank you so much for taking time of your busy schedule, man. And uh, hopefully, we'll have a fun chat. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Already looking up to it. All right. So before we start, a little bit about your background. It's very interesting. You're pursuing anime animation, and you're learning it in London. And it's a very creative field. Something that is not traditionally accepted in Indian societies, to say the least. and you actually have a very strong social media identity as well i mean i was just searching on your youtube page you're creating some of the best content i was looking at this video you're watching a video of uh, killen murphy as dr doom and i generally enjoyed it so tell me a little bit about what exactly are you doing right now where you based and what is your education setup right now so i am studying animation and filmmaking at ravensbourne university london my entire thing is to not go into animation it's to kind of go into comic books and concept art and character design and stuff because i personally think that's where majority of my passion is my work setup right now is mostly based on doing commissions and i'm working on my own graphic novel at the moment that i'm trying to get published by image comics or dark horse comics like i'm trying to like get it there uh, so that's what majority of my setup looks like right now and i'm graduating next year so i want to break into films and hopefully get my book published by then so yeah that's that's yeah. that's majority of the work that i'm doing right now that's fascinating man i don't know a lot of people in fact i haven't had a conversation with anyone who is even remotely related to this field let alone work on comic books write their own graphic uh, create their own graphic novels and work in uh, film production and whatever the this is very fascinating tell me a little bit about what exactly is your course like like what are the various tenets that you have to work with so majority the thing is i personally love drawing stuff but people in my class are 3d animators and my course is mainly 3d so a lot of it is based around pre production and actually making stuff happen in 3d so the stuff that you see in majority of pixar movies now is the stuff that they usually work on you know like the asset creations or you know the way scene flows or you know the way these character models are created you know what the entire production team looks like i on the other hand like doing 2d animation i love you know the old disney movies that these guys made you know that were hand drawn i'm a huge aaron place fan I watched a whole bunch of old anime like i'm a huge akira fan as well like you know just the art style of that movie was just like it, it boggled my mind so i kind of got into doing 2d animation and that essentially kind of kick started my whole process which put puts me in a really odd spot because these guys focus a lot on how the production comes together I am working on what happens before the production starts. I'm doing the concept art that these guys need. I'm doing the storyboards that these guys need. So, let's say I worked on a short film just now a couple of days ago uh, with a couple of people based in Kingston, and the short film was basically the psychological thriller that these guys were making and everything. So, before the production started, I had the script given to me, and before you know. there was a look for the film that the director even had in mind i was the one who was in charge and responsible of making something like that happen so i am doing that stuff those guys is the more focused on actually polishing and refining and just you know 
making everything come together and make it look as good as it does at the end you know i'm, I'm much more on the sketchy side so yeah that's right. what that's what majority mm-hmm. of the setup is like yeah fun fun how does one get into this how does one the, so this is a very naive <laughs> naive question and coming that from I, I, coming I, I, from a place which makes me look like a 40 year old uncle I'll asking this new that, gen no, I, kid <laughs> i get it i get i get i get every last bit of that you know yeah. before I, so when i was in school right i used to see these massive illustrators and painters and you know just these animators and everything i'm a comic book guy so like majority of my inspiration also comes from guys like you know Todd McFarlane or Rob Liefeld or you know Stan Lee Jack Kirby and these guys so i was like i want to become that i want to work on a spiderman movie or a book or something like that was my one main goal and like, i was like how do i get it eventually over time what i ended up doing was i just sat down and drew i put stuff out on instagram as much as possible right before i knew it a couple of companies were already contacting saying you we want to write an article on you you know we want to feature your work and everything i said like, okay you do it i'm happy to have my work out there so they started doing that and i then went to college but what i figured out later was that going to college did not exactly do much for me because all the stuff that got me into the work i wanted was what my instagram account was doing for me so what i ended up doing was this around I've been operating my Instagram since 2014. I've been digitally painting. Damn. I've been I've been digitally painting since I was 14, 15 years old, maybe. Right. Okay. So I, yeah, yeah, like 2015, 2016 or so. Mm-hmm. So I just kept making stuff. About a year ago, I was like, I need to step this up because I don't think personally, I don't think I'm the most skilled artist out there. I can't exactly beat people in terms of skill but I can outwork people so I was like all right let me try posting stuff every single day so I sat down I started drawing stuff out right people didn't exactly react much to it you know in the beginning but as I kept doing it my style just evolved it became faster sleeker looking and more eyes started coming in and before you knew it I was already in the whole you know art or uh, industry you know it's like i i didn't even know when the transition happened but it was mostly because of that mm-hmm. just put it out there that's all i would say and before you know it people will see and yeah. they'll take notice yeah right. so like just work at it yeah Yeah, digital drawing is very fascinating. Like I personally enjoy sketching a lot. I have uh, yeah. for the last one year, I have been trying to train myself with ballpoint pen sketching and hopefully getting yeah. better at it. Uh, but yeah. what is your process like? So I've never even tried or am even familiar with how digital. I know it has something to do with iPad. That's my the best short <laughs> guess that there is. I haven't, I haven't okay, tried like you, right you, you, you buy an iPad and suddenly you're a digital creator. That's that's my yeah, best short. but uh, yeah. yeah so what is that process like how do you go about i don't i don't necessarily need your patent yeah. secrets as in what is your style and what software you use yeah, but yeah, yeah. what is that process like if you could tell me uh, you know i'll i'll give you everything you know i'll i'll, I'll give you everything is the thing is when i saw your work right i saw the ballpoint sketches you make you recently posted that captain america sketch that you made yeah. and everything mm-hmm. i started exactly like that I used to draw on paper. I had this ballpoint pen. I used to carry around everywhere. You know, in the middle of the class, I wasn't the most studious kid either. You know, I was like, I got decent enough grades, but I was mostly focused on just drawing stuff. So I used to just draw on my hand if I didn't have a sheet of paper lying around somewhere. Right? It was all it all started with a ballpoint pen. And so I kind of like started from there. I used to fold half a sheet of paper and you know like try and draw comics on that. I used to trace over things. I used to copy a lot. So I've got this book lying around here right now, and this is Lee Burmeho's work. I used to copy a lot of his stuff, okay. which kind of influenced a lot of my early work. Mm-hmm. That's where I started. I started digital painting before the iPad Pro came out. It was on an old Wacom tablet that my grandmom got me. Okay. and i did not know what its use was but one fine day i was like okay i think i know what it does so i i plugged it in i went on ms paint of all the softwares and i started drawing i was like okay let me see how it goes i then got my old ipad and i had a i think i had like a 200 bucks 
stylus. It was that rubber tip stylus that they, that they used to sell at fairs and everything. And you got that. They were like, let me just try drawing it. And before the iPad Pro came out, that was what I was doing. I was tracing over stuff. I was trying to airbrush on top of that. It was not good. It was not even close to looking okay. sleek or nice. Okay. Right. Fair. The iPad Pro came out. I was like, okay, can I please get this? My parents got it. I was like, okay. Cost a lot, but I got to make it work. I'm still stuck with that iPad. This is the first gen iPad that I've got. It's outdated at this point, but it still works. The thing that really changed, me, changed it for me was this. I started drawing the same way I would on paper. I stopped thinking of it in a way where I was like, all right, I'm digitally painting. That's what like changed the entire game for me. I started sketching the way I would on paper. I started like inking stuff the way I would with a ballpoint pen. Coloring was a huge problem because like, you know, the way you color stuff digitally is really different. My dogs are fine. Uh, Dogs are always welcome on my pro- podcast. <laughs> Just like <laughs> move them running around man, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The way you color stuff digitally is really different. So that is what I was what I struggled with a lot. But eventually over time, what I ended up doing was all right, I sketched everything out, I put the base colors in, and I started painting on top of it the same way I would if I was doing it with acrylic paint on a canvas. That's why the painting you see behind you looks the way it does. That's why it starts looking really realistic compared to the old stuff I used to make. Or even the stuff I make now. I've become really stylized. So that's what kind of changed it for me. And like Mm -hmm. my process now is even, it's faster. I draw stuff. I color it with base colors. I put some shadows in. I put highlights in. That's it. Done. It it ends there. So yeah, it's it's, it's quite fun. Yeah. Yeah. Although you've given me sort of a hint as to why, but I still would ask you because yeah. you're making innovations as well. Why superheroes, yeah. right? So the background that I'm using right now, I can recognize one of the yeah. celebrities. It's common. Uh, I yeah. believe it's common who is as green. Lantern. It is common. Yeah. It and is, is common. I, I can't recognize the others, but I have seen other, for example, your YouTube channel has, uh, we have Killian Murphy, you have Joaquin Phoenix as Dr. Strange, Dr. Doom. And yeah. So all of this, I remember, okay, so uh, for all the viewers, I think I remember meeting Arkane in one of the best debates that I was uh, yeah. judging his rounds. And after yeah, that, I remember, one, yeah. yeah, and I, I remember uh, checking your Instagram out after that. It was really fascinating, but you were sketching regularly with the Superman posts and Flash posts and Batman and whatnot. Yeah. So yeah. it's a very obvious question when we go about the sketching art and all. My understanding is that I want a face that would possibly challenge me. Uh, right now, yeah. I'm struggling with shadows, uh, especially with ballpoint yeah. pen. So I'm picking up faces yeah. that have shadows. What is your? Yeah. What was your inspiration behind picking up superheroes? It started mainly because I love comic books. I I remember yeah. so because Marvel and DC, their main distribution was happening in the US, right? There was something called Gotham Comics that used to sell floppy comics here. And my parents used to get me like hordes of those. So I used to just like, you know, look at that. I was like, you know, yeah. this stuff looks cool. I want to draw Spider-Man again. So I was like, I was drawing that stuff. But as I grew up, I started focusing more on the story instead. So like the book that I'm working on, right? Mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It's it's a super you know, graphic novel that I'm working on. But the entire idea I'm trying to tackle with it is how power can corrupt someone. You know, how yeah. far can someone go trying to use their power to do good? You Black know, like, side of stuff, yeah. It's To a certain extent, I really like his stuff, but I'm not like that edgy yet. But like, you know, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, still a little, <laughs> I'm still a little real back. But more than anything, like right now, I'm less interested in superheroes, more interested in what those people with their powers do. You know, like what the entire point of that power is. Back in the day, it was just because it looked cool. Right now, it's right now it's because of the story. I'll, I'll give you a hot take. I don't I don't think I've like made this announcement on my Instagram either, but I'm working on this other short comic right now. It's gonna be without dialogues, no words in it. Damn. And it's basically fo- it's basically focusing on how a depressed superhero who's a veteran, everybody loves him, but he is a broke ass person would live in a world where, you know, he's so tuned out with everyone. You see people shouting at him, but there are no dialogues. 
and you know how his journey goes ahead and everything so more than that i'm just like trying to use his powers as a way to like you know show what sort of a person he is so that's that's my main reason for drawing superheroes right now i want to i want to do this for the rest of my life if i could well, it's really uh, first of all heartwarming to see that someone really loves what they do and loves it to this extent and secondly you can't make an announcement like this and not release a comic so that i can i can see it later <laughs> on fair enough fair enough fair enough this is perhaps the best plot that i've seen for a comic book uh, yeah. for, perhaps then what like the last comic book movie because i i think uh, recently that is what sells uh, majority of the market is comic book movies now and something yeah. after watchmen I I don't like I think Man of Steel was the last movie oh. where I genuinely appreciated the character. I'm a huge Watchmen vision. fan. Really? I'm yeah. a huge Watchmen fan. <laughs> so if I were to ask you DC versus Marvel what would you pick? DC. DC as far as comic books are concerned <laughs> I'd say DC. Nice. nice. Movies sure Marvel you know DC isn't yeah. exactly doing super great but comic yeah. books DC man um Spider-Man mm-hmm. is still my favorite. Okay. For I'm just I'm really just attracted to DC, you know, just yeah. because of the way those characters are. Right. Before we get into this conversation about NFTs, uh, which I think yeah. is something that I've been trying to have more and more conversations about. Mm. Apparently, everyone yeah. is having a conversation about it, and uh, yeah. to understand more about it, I think before that, uh, to close this segment of the conversation, we. Understood that you are pursuing animation, and you you believe that you made it to one of the top universities across the world for animation, and then you realize that you want to perhaps work in uh, a different style of production. Maybe uh, you want to go into graphic novels and stick with comic books, yeah. essentially, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. what exactly is the market demand, or where do you see if someone tomorrow watches this episode? and is also interested in animation wants to pursue the similar uh, field and then worries about employability worries about let's say the market acceptability what is that impression like it's it's really too full to be honest because the thing is employability because of covid has changed a lot this is something i was quite worried about because the thing is i'm studying in london right and employability has gotten massively affected because it's cheaper to employ people remotely so studios are like we'll just employ people from you know other countries and they don't even have to move right yeah so that way employment is going to be affected for i think the next 2 3 years so i can't exactly speak on that just yet because i'm also in the middle of trying to figure out what that is but here is the good part if you have the skill right and you work hard enough to garner an audience you don't need to be employed i am working as a freelancer right now and i personally if i could continue it this way i would because okay. like you have options you have something like patreon to you know get you constant money in every month then it doesn't even have to cost a lot you just need to garner like even if you get like you know 100 people you know and you're in india right now right and you get like 100 people to pay you 5 dollars that's still quite a bit of money yeah 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 exactly if you if you if you if you th- start thinking about it that way so mm-hmm. it can start from 3 dollars 1 dollar go up to 10 20 50 as much as you want based on the number of people that you have so right now what i would say is this worry less about the employability more about improving your skill because skilled people will always find a job no matter what when it comes to a field like animation or illustration there is work everywhere you know like serial boxes need illustration for all you know scotch bright yeah. needs you know uh, animators to animate ads for them you know it's like you, you need that stuff so yeah. you'll not run out of jobs that much i can tell you it's just going to be a little hard for the next few years well let me ask you a follow up and a rather selfish question here hmm. how do you garner <laughs> an audience how do you garner an audience how do you, how, okay, how do you garner an audience this was a huge one that i tried to figure out for the longest time at first i thought it was oh creating something unique creating something you know that's just going to go viral i started following trends didn't work right i was i was i was stuck here was what worked consistently posting number one interaction with people number two then comes the part where you try and show them something unique i have this habit 
of every two weeks or so, I go on my Instagram story and I ask people, "What do you guys want to see next?" I get like a whole bunch of people giving a whole bunch of different replies. You know, we want to see this, we want to see that. I'm like, all right, I've got the time. I'll make it. And they seem to like that. Then they seem to share. When when they share that stuff, you know, it automatically starts going to more people. And if you do it in a skillful manner, more people start coming in, and they start staying longer. So the easiest way is to do it consistently, do it with quality, and then start looking after the people who are supporting you. That's the best way I can tell you to do it. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. I think and I slowly, slowly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Please continue. Slowly, slowly. I'd say start introducing yourself as well as a person. Okay. You know, mm-hmm. that's that's a massive one. You can find cool art to look at anywhere, but you know. more than that it's the artist that a lot of people also care about which i don't think they do just mm-hmm. yet but i'm trying to get there you know it's like i'm, I'm trying to gardener that as well a little bit no but this yeah. is this is very fascinating a particular aspect of personal branding that i think i have been thinking for some point uh, for quite some time now and when you say uh, yeah. creating an identity of the artist although the yeah. the biggest example that i can think of right now is banksy so i'll tell you why i'm using this example yeah. uh one of my favorite pa- paintings right now is the parliament and uh, you look at that painting right. you see the chimpanzees sitting in the british parliament and when all those paintings came out those wall murals came out his graffitis came out uh, no one even to date not everyone knows what banksy looks like or who is he or where right. is he they were all of that right. but you recognize right. those paintings saying hey this is a banksy you know that's that's a banksy that's a very banksy yeah. painting right yeah. so yeah. he has created his identity he has created his name attached to the work and i think your yeah, exactly. your art right now the fact that there is i mean the closest that i can relate to what you were saying against the 3d uh, movies that are coming out is the recent spider man animated movie that won the oscar yeah. uh, the miles morales yeah. one right yeah thoroughly appreciated for the animation that it had and uh, your yeah. work also has a similar style i think soon enough people will recognize that the quality of the comics and i think you've recently ventured into hindu mythology as well using it as uh, that, I, that i'll i'll explain all of that when we come to the nfts that's actually the, that excites me quite a lot i'll 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 explain all of that perfect so let's come to nfts now like i think it is yeah. appropriate that we talk about nfts uh, to all my yeah. viewers i think nft is apart from all of the other conversation that we having on uh, blockchain and cryptocurrency and what not uh, despite of whatever elon musk elon musk says uh, we have a good good thing at our hand this is from my own personal research and study is nft is by far the most artistically innovative thing that i have seen 100% so i can tell our audience since you have actually created nft right? so you are better position to explain it what are nfts nft is a non fungible token it's basically a unique token on the blockchain that shows that the specific piece of data that you've put on is unique it's not interchangeable it can't be punched so it's like if let's say you have you want 20 bucks right i have a 20 rupee note you know you've got two 10 rupee notes you give me the 10 rupee notes i give you the 20 rupee notes neither of us lose anything you give me a yeah. 10 rupee note i give you a pencil you know you can't that the pencil becomes non fungible right it's that's what it is it's essentially that so basically the problem that happened for the longest time with digital art was this you have the painting in the background right you yeah. can easily replicate it as many times as you want and there's no way to find out which the original version was yeah what an nft basically does is it attaches a unique token to that file to show that this is the authentic original copy of that painting so when nft is like started booming right and i was researching into it i went to a whole bunch of forums i started reading up on it the thing that people kept saying was this i could save that image and i will have it like what's the point of buying an nft and basically people answered that he said that he basically said you can have a picture you can have a copy of the painting but you will not have the valuable nft attached to it it's not the painting that it has the value specifically it's the nft token attached to the original painting okay. that has the value attached to it so that is the easiest way to explain it this basically makes digital art legitimate to a certain extent 
as far as ownership is concerned right that's and, what it does and yeah. how does it how does it uh, so how does it come into this picture of trading buying selling or uh, acquiring nft how does that happen so okay think of it this way nfts don't just apply to paintings or art right an nft basically is a unique token you can attach to anything right you can practically have someone give you a diploma as an nft you can have your house lease be signed to you as an nft you can have marriage certificates being bonded as an nft right more than anything the nft is just a utility tool that's when the buying the trading the selling comes in to buy a piece of painting let's say you buy the mona lisa right mona lisa is rare you can sell it for a higher price than what you bought it you can trade it because the value keeps going up considering the artist name attached to the painting itself is really really recognizable and has some value to it that's essentially when the idea of trading it comes in i bought a couple of nfts as well i haven't sold one yet and i'll explain why i bought a couple of nfts and the thing is because the ethereum marketplace is going up in value the value of the nft i bought is also going up so let's say if i bought it for 50 dollars it's currently sitting at 120 i can yeah. sell that and make the money back as well so it's like you know that the value of the market is going up the ability to trade is coming in it automatically becomes a version of what the original art market is in the real world that's why it's nice. trading and you know selling it away that's what I it see. is perfect perfect so how does one before i ask you how to create yeah. nft because uh, yeah. i i recognize a couple of things that i would request your uh, clarifications on it at a later 100%. stage but firstly how does one buy nfts and on a on a contemporary basis in india with the uh, with a dicey cryptocurrency reactive situation that is we have in india yeah. although it's not banned yeah. it's it's also not legalized it's not regulated yeah. it's there it's just there right so yeah. how does one buy nfts luckily because it's not banned in india right now you are in a position where you can make crypto transactions you can have crypto directly go into your bank and you can keep doing that stuff where do you buy nfts from there are marketplaces where you can acquire nfts one of the major ones and this is the largest one right now it's called opensea okay so opensea is basically imagine ebay but it was just yeah. selling digital items that's what opensea is Perfect. then there is a website called rareable which is a little better you know it's it's a little more refined it's a little more user friendly then there are the elite artistic you know curated platforms like super rare uh, foundation nifty gateway nifty gateway is owned by the winkle was twins you know the same one that involved with the facebook case yeah, yeah. you know so they, they ventured off into the whole exclusivity thing as it is what those platforms do are that's where the big artists are right okay. like boss logic is a big digital artist who's there people who was at nifty gateway as well you know so like these big guys are there on those curated platforms but for people to just buy nft is open sea and rareable are a really really good option that's if you have crypto if you don't have crypto you can go to marketplaces like super rare and you can buy nfts directly using your debit card as well so okay it mostly depends on the marketplace that you want to buy from that's where right. that's where majority of it is yeah. so essentially what uh, for example if we were to use crypto it would become yeah. a, a sort of an investment again right so essentially it becomes 100%. an economic investment that you can trade in future 100% perfect so now that we come to how one can create uh, nfts i yeah. see that you've created or uh, i in your uh, link tree i see two entries one of the three uh, yeah, three three now yeah oh there are three now perfect so yeah, first of all tell me what have you created um and then okay. maybe you can tell me how have you created them so i've created three pieces and because i mean i think i've made it pretty obvious i'm a i'm a fan of comic books and narrative storytelling <laughs> and like the you know, world building what i'm essentially trying to do is i'm trying to build a fictional universe inside the nft marketplace and i'm trying to do that through an art series it's called mythology genesis what i'm essentially trying to do is i'm trying to tell a story 
where gods from all different mythologies coexist on earth at the same time so you can have stories where you see shiv interacting with odin or zeus or you know athena and stuff like that so i'm really really massively you know the inspired by a lot of different mythologies and really like you know into that whole thing so i was like all right let me just try and make some stuff up so i redesigned a picture of shiv that was my first genesis nft the second thing i designed was icarus and the third i designed was odin those are the three nfts that i have and i experimented with putting them up on different platforms so that will kind of tie into how an nft is created so i've got a whole bunch of other stuff that i'm planning on making i just need to figure out a way on how i need to implement it that's all right um how an nft is created you need to buy some crypto uh you can do it okay. so i buy my crypto from wazirx that's where you know the the we've got the best price is that the conversions directly happen money easily gets deposited back into your account as well so i buy my stuff from wazirx I use a MetaMask wallet to deposit the crypto into. The okay. process is something like this: I buy Ethereum from Wazirx. I transfer my Ethereum from my Wazirx account into my buy into my Binance account, and from my Binance account into my MetaMask wallet. Now, after okay. all of that is done, I need to connect these websites to my MetaMask wallet. I need to initiate a transaction, which costs I think around seventy dollars. and then after that is done i need to mint the nft which costs i think 50 more dollars maybe so okay. the entire thing when the gas prices are really high costs somewhere around 150 to 180 dollars just to mint an nft right now i'll explain why i tried experimenting with these different platforms when i got in i was pretty apprehensive because 150 dollars to publish paintings each time didn't make yeah. sense right luckily open sea once you publish an nft on their website for the first time you don't need to pay them anything for the next ones you can keep minting as okay. much as you want okay but for websites like foundation and rareable you need to pay them every single time so that's why i experimented with all all these accounts and everything and all these different websites i would personally say if you want to mint somewhere just to start go on open sea okay. rareable is going to again do the exact thing that open sea is doing right now where they're going to have zero charges for the consecutive nfts that you post after the first one so currently i'd say go on open sea experiment if right. you want if you got some extra cash to spare but yeah that's start there that's what i would right. say perfect and where do you see these nfts going like one of the uh, immediate oh, reactions which in my opinion are knee jerk reactions to the perhaps the yeah. contemporary situation as to how cryptocurrency is being perceived uh, i think it will uh, like from a 250% uh, growth to 70% downfall is not really that big of a concern it's not a bubble yeah, it's, not been, yeah. it's been years now man come on so yeah. now now where do you see nft going from here are you scared that maybe yeah. it will possibly face the market crash or do you think it is still profitable and you anyway are having fun making it you might as well hope that it grows i i i really really like that question it fires on all cylinders to be honest uh is uh mm-hmm. i think nfts are here to stay but at okay. the same time even if they crash it's okay because you know this is exactly what happened when to a certain extent you know what internet was like in its early days as well that's what i've heard from a lot of people like you know growing up in the early 2000s stuff wasn't fast enough you know you know social media came and it affected a lot of things right for me feels like people are a little apprehensive with the idea of nfts right now because it's being applied to something like digital art right yeah the moment you start the moment you start applying the utility of nfts to something that no, regular people can also understand you know you suddenly start selling house bonds with nfts attached to them you know you suddenly start giving like you know the authentic files that you know certify that you're a owner of a sort of a you know a specific piece of land or something or a specific house or something you know anything material in the real world i think people will understand the utility of nfts as well so i personally think nfts are here to stay was i scared getting into it 
I was scared I lost a hundred and fifty dollars. That's what I was scared about. <laughs> I was <laughs> more more than anything else. Because I mean, even if it crashes, it's it's there. Like, I mean, does it make a difference? Not really. I'd say I'd say it's in its really really early stages right now. Right. Don't expect to get the same result that you know, let's say people got. And I was subconsciously thinking I'll do that, but it just it doesn't work. It's like don't don't think that. Go into it if you want to experiment. Think of this in a way where you're going in and you're like, all right, I'm the infancy stages of something new. This could very easily, blow, which I personally think it will. This could very easily blow up if I ground myself really early on. By the time everybody else starts coming in, I already have my foundation built. Yeah, fair. So, I I would personally say I think it's you to stay. Yeah. And seeing where everything is going, I mean, everything is becoming. Virtual and digital, you know, it only yeah. makes sense for money to be digitized as well. Yeah. You know, I was listening to this talk by Gary uh, Gary Vaynerchuk the other day, and he said something along the lines of this: Even if you ban crypto for a while, what good will it do? The NFTs are already here. You know, people already have Bitcoin. People already have a form of currency that is accepted. That does not need to have government supervision on it. You know, so it's like everybody likes that. You know, that free idea of just having yeah. you know, their hands on whatever they own. You know, so it's like it's already here. You can't go back anymore. You know, you can yeah. only move forward. So yeah, it's right. yeah. perfect. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. No, I think for people who uh, perhaps don't understand NFTs, and that includes. uh someone like me also is trying to understand yeah. nfts the analogy that i can understand from your description is let's take youtube for example and uh, right now yeah. a year a year ago i started my channel it took me almost a year to get around 1000 subscribers think about all those yeah. major big youtubers right they started when yeah. youtube was still in its infancy and they started exactly. creating content on it they did not have that audience back then perhaps 7 years ago 6 years ago whenever and now they have the audience because youtube did blow yeah. up right and yeah. they did get the advantage of understanding how the algorithm works because the algorithm did fail yeah. so yeah, eventually yeah. this is going to happen with the nft creators as well okay because let me okay mm-hmm. think about it this way i think yeah. this might explain it you are hosting this podcast right now when it blows up you have a lot of people coming in yeah and you have your first video on your hands right suddenly if you have a podcast that provides so much value to people that is famous you can go sell that video for hundreds of thousands of dollars that's essentially what an nft does damn you're yeah. bringing value that you can attach an nft to that first video you know so this kind of like harkens back to the first question you asked me about employability as well right now i'd say focus on making something you know like Speci- specifically for artists and like you know I've met a lot of musicians who are doing NFTs as well I forgot who did it but there was a concert the en- entire concert was sold as an NFT to someone for i think 3 million dollars or something just a recording yeah. of the concert and that was the original source file taken directly from the cameraman who was working on the concert with the musician so you know it's like anything that blows up anything that has some story behind it some level of significance and value you can attach it as an nft and just sell it you know like you can sell yeah. your first video for like you know 500000 dollars if you want you know and it's like i can see that happening yeah, so yeah I, i think yeah that's the easiest way to explain it perfect perfect and okay so let's let's understand some of the most basic thing here right so if you are a creator yeah. you have created an nft and uh, yeah. now how do you make money so one thing is that do you sell it to the buyers or do buyers invest in it or is it like an auction process what is it like like how do you sell in it there are there are two ways of doing it it's not exactly like an investment there is an auction though i'll explain so basically making nft is making money on nfts is not exactly as easy as just posting it and getting people to buy it what i discovered going in was this you know in the real world right there are so many painters but not everyone makes the big box right yeah. there are a handful of collectors who buy certain paintings you need to find collectors in the digital space as well 
Okay. That is the first thing that needs to be understood. There are people who will specifically invest into NFTs as a way where they can not just quadruple, you know, or quantifiably increase their money by a huge, huge manifold, but also just to own art in general. You need to find people the same way artists do in the real world. That's how, to a certain extent, you make money on an NFT. The process is fa- fairly simple. You have two options. You can either set a reserve price and that is the price that the NFT will be sold at or you can auction it. You can set a base price and you can set a reserve price and everything in the middle, people can keep auctioning as much as they want. So that okay. works the way a regular auction would. Right, right. And then as a, creator, as a creator, you earn royalties out of the NFT that is created? You do. That's the best part. So you get to choose how much royalty you earn as well. For example, I made an NFT. You okay. bought the NFT from me, right? I got the initial sale money, right? Let's say you sell the NFT to someone else. I will get royalty off of that sale as well. I get to choose how much I want, whether it's 10%, 15%, 20%. It's fairly acceptable to go for 5 to 10 because any more than okay. that is a huge chunk of money. But yeah. 5 to 10 is where people mostly do it. So any resale will keep bringing in residual income. And because the Ethereum marketplace is constantly going up in value, that money will go up. Even if it goes down, it's bound to go up at some point. So yeah, yeah, resale. This is, I think this is the best part of NFTs. You know, like creators get that money residually, you know, so that I think is 100%. Revolutionary right. to a certain extent. Yeah. It is perfect, man. Perfect. I, I almost forgot that we are recording this conversation for a podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just looked at that recording uh, sign on Zoom and I realized, jam, yeah, we were actually having a conversation for the purpose of conversation. We've got to put this online. Yeah. <laughs> no, I genuinely thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it, man. I don't remember yeah. having a conversation where I was so invested and uh, yeah. enjoyed it so much. Because I Same. I am awed by not just your art, but the way you move about it. I think the very fact that NFTs require a personal identity that is celebrated, number yeah. one, and is acceptable to the audience, which is re- like which religiously follows this one identity, your art will definitely garner that. I think the projects that you're working on, graphic novels and all, these are so fascinating because we know Thank that you. now the pop culture is somehow understanding yeah. that the traditional modes of entertainment have to be revolutionary. Yeah. Right? Netflix exactly. changed everything. Everything is just going, right? great, man. Like yeah. I think uh, this is, this is the conversation that people need, especially the ones who 100%. enjoy uh, cryptocurrency. And thank you so much for explaining it uh, with, 100%. I mean, with so much depth and so much understanding. And I had a wonderful time. Do you have any closing remarks for our uh, viewers, listeners? To a certain extent, I also wanted to leave another piece of information that a lot of people are not focusing on. Yeah, please. Ethereum, Ethereum, Ethereum is not the only coin you can use to produce NFTs. Okay. A major concern people had with Ethereum was this. It's currently working on a um, POW system, I think. Uh, it needs to go to a proof of stake system not on a proof of work system because the proof of work system is really, really harmful towards the environment to a certain extent, which was a major concern people had. The best thing you can do is invest in alternate coins like Tezos and Wax because those two coins have their own NFT marketplaces running on them. The value of those coins are obviously lesser. Like Ethereum, I think is currently running at, I think $3,000. I think one Ethereum is, I think upwards of $3,000 right now. Yeah. One Tezos is somewhere around 500 bucks. I think it's $5. Okay. So it's cheaper, not just to mint it. It does. It won't cost you $150, yeah. but the amount of margin and the amount of money you can bring in will to a certain extent also be lesser. But the good yeah. thing is you can replicate an NFT as many times as you want. It doesn't just have to be a one of one piece. There is a one of one piece and then there is a one of as many number as you want. piece. So for example, there are people who are doing digital trading cards as well. Trading cards are like what, like a hundred different cards at the same time. 
they make one image make 100 copies of it sell each of them so, and if they sell it for like 1 dollar each that's still a 100 dollars coming in yeah so that is something you can look into as well it does not need to cost a lot and it doesn't need to be charged for a lot either uh as far yeah. as closing remarks are concerned I'd say focus <laughs> that's, on sales. That's, that, that's a that's a very sharp doubter. I think uh, uh, <laughs> talking about <laughs> talking you about the acceptable <laughs> <experience. laughs> yeah, closing man. remarks. Now, man, like let's let's, let's 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 slow this down. Let's slow this down. Okay, yeah, let's, let's slow this. Okay, down. okay. So Closing you remarks. you you yeah. no wait wait wait. Oh, let's wait, let's wait, slow wait, the wait, conversation wait. down. Okay. Um, yeah, you talk about Ethereum being acceptable, right? And then you say yeah. that you we can invest in coins. So, are you suggesting yeah. that these alternative coins, which are open for investment even at this moment, should yeah. see a growth in the future because their model of production is suitable for environment and that we can use for either minting or then go for NFTs as well. And secondly, what you suggest is. That there can be multiple copies of NFTs as well, right? So we can sell it again right. and again. Is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. Okay. Right, perfect. Yeah. So if I were to tomorrow as a customer buy one yeah. of those copies, what is yeah. the unique identity of let's say five trump cards produced? What is the unique identity of holding one of those trump cards? Or is it that the it value? Be- Achha. No, go on, go on, go on, go on. So is it like the value of all the Trump cards go up or is it that there is something unique about that? For example, there was this Cristiano Ronaldo FQT card that uh, got yeah. out for NFTs, right? I read something yeah. about it. So there are yeah. multiple cards of Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah. So what I understand is just like it happens in FIFA or it happens in PES, you get one mm. moment card and then the value of that card goes up. So if I had that card, yeah. you have that card. The value of that card goes up. There's something unique about the card that I own that goes up. Okay, think of it this way. Hmm. Even if I produce a hundred cards at once, yeah, it stops at hundred. Okay. There are just hundred cards present of that specific image. I'm not gonna make any more of that. Damn. So if there are a hundred different cards of the same image, and that is the only amount you can ever find. Even if the value of one card goes up, you are bound to expect the other value is also supposed to go up. You know, a number one will always be valued at more than a number two. But if there are five cards yeah. total, a number five, even if it's valued less than a number four or a number three, will still have its value go up specifically because it's a card that is related to that series. So yeah. it's bound to go up, you know, even if it goes up at once. As far as investment is concerned, it is already seeing growth, but the thing is this, Ethereum is very, very accepted in a manner where it is, it's the staple. It's okay. what the foundation is built on, right? So, you know, if like, if there is something that people are already using to change that, it requires a lot of work, right? Yeah. Ethereum is that. And once it changes from a proof of work system to a proof of stake system and the environment problems also go down, I personally think Ethereum will be the one that will prevail, but Tezos and Vax will also go up in value at the same time, even if it's not that much. That's what I personally think. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. that's that's very fascinating. And I need to do a lot more reading on cryptocurrency than I already have. I was not aware of most of the things that we talked about, but it was fun. It was fun to be at the receiving end of this conversation. Genuinely fun. And uh, yeah, now I think we can move to closing remarks. Okay, 100%. 100%. Uh, Closing remarks. I'd say don't worry about stuff like employability. If you're an artist, just work, create something good. As far as NFTs are concerned, Understand it's not just related to paintings. It's a utility tool. Number three, I'd say have fun doing whatever you're doing. And I'm saying that as someone who sits in my room 14, 15 hours a day working on multiple pieces, you got to have fun if you're yeah. doing it. Like, like, <laughs> you, can't, you can't sit there if you're not having fun. So just have fun and things are looking up. That's what I would say. So don't worry. That's what I, that, that's what I want to end with. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Perfect. 
wonderful man wonderful lovely conversation i think one of the richest conversations that i've had at least on technology at least on uh, you know, cryptocurrency i don't think i've had a conversation like this uh, nfts is something that i have been i mean researching on reading up on a little bit and trying to have a conversation so that i can put it on the one take show so that actually people who listen to this podcast can either be introduced to nfts or learn more about it and then we have a conversation where we can actually learn about how to create nfts how to buy nfts what are nfts and how are nfts different from the regular paintings so thank you so much man i had a ball 100%. i hope you had a good time too 100% i enjoyed this man and i i really I enjoy when I am asked a lot of questions. You probably ask the best ones. Perfect. <laughs> I, can, I can I can say that one hundred percent. Shall good. I I I hope I'm doing half or perhaps even quarter as good as you're doing with your art. And uh, hopefully yes. one day this episode gets minted on NFTs. Let's let's set no, on that. Five hundred thousand on it. Starting price. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much, Arkin. Thank you so much. It was a fun 100%. conversation.